In this exercise, we'll look at repaying a loan. Kara spends $229 a month to repay her student loan. If she has already paid $9,160 on the 10-year loan, how many payments remain? We'll solve this problem using the five-step problem-solving process. And the first step is to familiarize ourselves with the situation. We read the problem, again, carefully, making sure we understand everything about the problem. And something we can observe is that if she has monthly payments for 10 years, she's going to have to make 10 times 12, or 120 payments in all. So if we can figure out how many payments she's already made, we can use this number to find out how many payments remain. So that we need to, that to define a variable. Let's let p equal the number of payments that remain. And um, we'll make a, we'll let m equal the number of payments that were already made. And that gives us a start enough to go on to the next step, which is to translate. The first thing we're going to do is to come up with an equation that will help us find m, which is the number of payments that were already made. So the payments, the amount of payments made to date divided by the amount of each payment. is going to be the number of payments made. So, translating that, the amount of the payments made to date was $9,160 divided by the amount of each payment, which was $229 that equals the number of payments made, which we define to be M. So let me write this out more clearly. 9,160 divided by 229 equals M. We were asked to find the number of payments that, were re that remained. So we're going to need another equation. And we can think of that as the payments already made plus the payments that remain to be made is the total number of payments. And we know that the payments that were made already is the variable m that we defined, plus we define the number of payments remaining as p is translates to equals and we found that the total number of payments that 10 times 12 was 120. So for a second equation we have m plus p equals 120. We've translated the, prob the situation in the problem to mathematical language. We go to the third step which is to solve. Remember what we're trying to find is p. So we're going to have to do two steps. We're first of all going to have to find m. We find m by dividing 9,160 by 229. Divide 229 into 9,160. 229 goes into 916 four times. 40 times 229 is 9,160. Subtract. This gives us a zero in the ones place and we have an answer for m of 40. So we have m equals 40. So she's already made 40 payments. 
In the second equation, we can substitute now 40 for m. So we have 40 plus p equals 120. Subtracting 40 from both sides, we have 40 plus p minus 40 equals 120 minus 40, or p equals 80. And so we have solved for both m and for p. And if it gets confusing to find out which one we were looking for, that's why it was very important to write that down in the familiarized step. If we looked back, we would find that p is the number of payments that remain to be made, which is what we were looking for. Now to check the answer, we can actually approach the problem a little bit differently. We can look at the problem, how much would she have paid back in 10 years? In 10 years, she would have paid 120 payments times $229 a month, or $27,480. That's the total she had to pay back in 10 years. She's already paid $9,160. If you subtract, she has left to pay $18,320. Let's label this. Okay. Now, if she has $18,320 left, and she's paying $229 a month, if you take 18,320 and divide by 229, you should get the number we're looking for. Or if you take the number of payments we said that were left, 80, and multiply by 229, you should get how much is left. And if you carry out that multiplication, you do get $18,320. So we checked our problem by looking at it a slightly different way, and we found that indeed there are 80 payments left. We state our Answer with a complete sentence. For the fifth step, 80 payments remain on the loan.